Let us understand how we can load the data into databases using utilities provided. Most of the databases provide data loading utilities. One of the most common way of getting data into database tables is by using data loading utilities provided by the underlying database technology. However, when it comes to the terms, we typically see the terms such as export import, uh, SQL loader, external loader, data loader, etc. When it comes to migrating data from one type of database to another type of database, one of the common uh, approach is we extract the data from one database in the form of CSV files or delimited files, copy those files into the target database and load into the tables in the target database using the database specific utility. For example, if I want to migrate data from MySQL to Postgres, I can extract the data in MySQL tables into some delimited files, copy those files into the Postgres and use some Postgres specific data loader to load the data into the table. Let's uh, see some examples here so that you understand what I'm talking about. We can load delimited files into databases using these utilities, which are provided by the underlying database technologies. Here are the steps we can follow to load the delimited data into the table. Once we have the files, we need to ensure that the files are available on the server from which we are trying to load. The reason why most of the databases force you to copy the files onto the server is multifold. One is security. Second one is performance. By having the files on the server to which we are trying to load the data, the performance will be better irrespective of the size of the file. If you have a 10 GB file and if you are trying to load from a remote machine, it might be slow compared to copying the file into the database server and then using the utilities on the server directly to load data into the table. That's why most of the databases force you to copy the files into the database server to leverage the utilities to get the data into the target tables. Once the files are available, you need to ensure that database and table are created for the data to be loaded. We need to run relevant command to load the data into the table. Then we have to validate by running some queries against the tables. These are the most fundamental steps. However, depending upon the size of the database, number of tables, the constraints that are there on the tables, the sequences that are used on top of the tables, the steps will become a bit complicated. We'll get into those strategies at a later point in time once we understand some of the core concepts with respect to the databases. For now, as we are getting into learning Postgres, we will just understand how to load the data quickly in case if you have to load and then we will take it further. Let us see a demo by loading a sample file into the table in Postgres database. To load the data into a Postgres table from a file, we can use copy command using psql. We need to ensure that the database is created along with the user with right permissions. Also, the user who wanted to use copy command need to have this role assigned. If this role is not assigned, then the user will not be able to leverage copy command to load data from files into the database tables. We have to create the file with sample data. In this case, data is added to users.csv under this location slash data slash sms underscore db. You can actually open the terminal here and you should be able to see the details. So let me run ls-ltr data sms underscore db. So if you are using our environment for practice, the file is already available here. You don't need to copy the file or you don't need to create a file with the data. That being said, if you want to have your own database and take care of these steps using Docker, I will demonstrate how to copy the files into the tables as part of the next topic. For now, I'm assuming that you have the database and users pre-created along with the permissions and use copy command to copy the files or data in the files into the table. So as we have the file, now it is time for us to connect to the database. We can leverage this command. In my case, the database is itvarsity underscore sms underscore db. The username is itvarsity underscore sms underscore user. It is running on the same server on which I am uh, connected to and hence I am using localhost. Otherwise, you have to specify the appropriate IP address or DNS alias and the port number is 5432. Let me connect here. It will prompt for the password. I have to enter the password here. Now I am connected to the database. I can say backward slash D to list the tables. There is only one table called as T. Now I am creating the table called as uh, users here. So this is the create table command. Let me run this. Now if you compare the table structure with the data, the table have nine columns user ID, which is of type serial, then first name, last name, email ID, email validated, password, user role, is active, created date, etc. But when it comes to the data, it have only five columns. First name, last name, email ID, user role, created date. 
also this file contain header the first line in the file is nothing but a header it's not the actual data we need to keep this in mind because when it comes to copy command while copying this file we have to say that this file contains the header so that this is skipped we can actually specify the column names while using the copy command let me show you how the copy command look like so copy users users uh, is the table name and these are the columns in the table then from you have to specify the path of the file in single quotes like this as our data is comma separated or comma delimited we have to say delimiter comma like this we are trying to load using csv and hence csv and then as our file have header we are specifying header here so this is a very simple command which will facilitate us to load the data from this file into this table using these columns however for other four columns for example in case of serial the column will be populated using sequence when it comes to user email validated by default it is false and hence the value that will be used while loading data into the table for user email validated will be false for password it will be null for is active again it will be false for created date it will be the current date so depending upon the defaults it will try to get the data into the other columns if there are no defaults it will just populate with nulls so this will take care of loading the data in the file into the table using these five columns and the default values as well as the sequence generated numbers in case of user id now let us run this command now the copy is successful it have copied five records now i should be able to validate by saying select star from users it will take care of running the query against the table and you can see the data here so the data is loaded successfully so this is how you can leverage the data loading utilities provided by the underlying database technology to get the data into the table this is a very simplified example the actual strategies will change depending upon the scope of the database migration and hence you have to come up with a plan you have to come up with several scripts load the data into the tables and also you have to come up with a strategy to test to ensure that all the data is copied from the source system to the target system without any gaps